Delusions are false beliefs, often with bizarre content, that feature in a wide range of psychiatric and neurological conditions. Psychiatric conditions such as schizophrenia or bipolar disorder, neurological conditions such as traumatic brain injury, stroke and dementia. Just to give you some examples, people with Capra delusion believe that somebody close to them has been replaced by a physically identical imposter, whereas those with Cotta delusion will say that they're dead or that they've ceased to exist in some fashion. A more common garden variety type of delusion is paranoid or persecutory delusions. As delusions have devastating consequences in terms of suffering and loss of personal and social and occupational functioning, it's really important to try and understand the factors that cause people to develop delusions. In a classic study, um, researchers took two jars of beads, such as the, the jars you see here. Um, each of the jars was filled with 100 beads in opposite ratios. For instance, we've got 85 red beads and 15 yellow beads in this jar, 85 yellow and 15 red beads in this jar. Now what the researchers did is that they, they hid the jars from view and they took one of the jars and they started drawing a series of beads out of the jar one at a time at random. And what the participants had to do in this study was to stop the researcher when they were ready to decide which of the two jars the beads were coming from. For instance, the first bead would be drawn out, a red bead, and the participant would then have to decide whether they wanted to choose whether it was the mostly red or mostly yellow jar, or whether they wanted to see another bead before making that decision. And what the researchers in this classic study found is that people um, with delusions decided much earlier than, than control participants. And indeed, half of the deluded sample made their decision after seeing just a single bead. And this, this tendency for people who are prone to delusions to gather less information, less evidence before making decisions and forming beliefs has come to be known as jumping to conclusions. So in a recent study that I and some of my collaborators con conducted, we wanted to try and explore this finding a little bit further. In particular, we wanted to know whether people who are prone to delusions actually do jump to conclusions. When we say jumping to conclusions, we imply that someone has made a decision before they rationally should have. They've reached a premature decision. But the classic task with the beads in the jars doesn't actually enable us to, to find out whether someone has decided prematurely. This is because the, the, it's not really clear what the optimum point to decide is in this, in this standard task. Some people might get tired really easily and just want to decide really early. Others might be more inclined um, to favour getting the correct decision about which jar the beads were coming from and they'll go for longer. So what we did in our, in our study is that we used uh, economic incentives. Basically we paid people money for getting the right decision and we also made them pay a small financial cost to collect extra, every extra piece of evidence. Um, in this case, every extra bead. But in our study we used a, a slightly more engaging setup where we had a fisherman who was fishing from one of two lakes and um, the participants had to decide which of the two lakes the fisherman was fishing from and they could see a sequence of fish um, before they made that decision. So what we did is that we paid people money for getting the, the right lake and we also made them pay a cost for each successive fish that they saw before making that decision. And with that combination of reward and costs, it's possible to compute a rationally optimal point at which you should decide to earn the most money. And that way we can compare the decisions that people make to this optimal point. What we found in our study is that people with um, delusion proneness did jump to conclusions in the sense that they decided before the people who were not delusion prone, so that's the classic finding, but we also found that the delusion prone people decided before the rationally optimal point, so they jumped to conclusions in both senses. Interestingly, even the non-delusion prone people jumped to conclusions. So everybody jumped to conclusions, but the delusion prone people jumped further. So this study forms part of a, a body of work that helps us to explain the origins of these distressing and perplexing symptoms. And this kind of work can help us to uh, design effective therapeutic interventions for people with delusions to try and alleviate these symptoms.